everybody, I am back with another Smart Art Box. This is the elusive, mysterious April box that I have here in front of me. Slight spoiler warning, I'll just say it right now. Slight spoiler warning, I already have an idea of what's in this box because I happened to look on Instagram the day after this box was delivered to me and I saw a spoiler for one of the main things inside. So I already have slight ideas to where this is going and I'm already very excited based off of that one little spoiler about what's inside this box. So I'm just gonna get right on into it. I'm gonna get right into this box and start seeing what's in here and make some really cool art with it because I am excited about this one. I sure do hope it's okay. The bottom of the box is damaged. All right, let's see what's in here. Can I just say I love how they've changed the wrapping paper to this? It used to be just orange, if you remember looking at previous boxes. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know they used to have more of a orange paper that matched the color that was at the top of the box right here. But after they released their box with the glass dipping pen with all the alcohol ink, they switched to using this sort of wrapping paper and I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love this wrapping paper so, so much. It's so colorful. It's, it's so pretty. I love it. All right, let's open it on. Uh, yeah, this is what I saw. I saw this design and I I saw that it's possibly watercolor markers. I see some watercolor markers here. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, maybe I just won't look at this yet. I won't look at that yet. I like this sticker. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, whoa. Oh, hey, I have one of these. This is both This is both a burnisher and a brush pencil. I actually really, really like these. These are absolutely amazing. Not a burnisher. That's a pencil eraser. It's a pencil eraser, not a burnisher. I'm stupid. I'm used to pencil erasers having a pink edge, not a white one. So I was genuinely just saying and the wrong thing there. Ooh, these are Kurataki. I've been very, very interested in this brand for a while. I've never used these before. I've never used these type of pens. I hear, or not pens. I've seen a lot of people use these brushes before. I've personally never tried them before. These are the ones that you fill up with the water and then you squeeze them to get water out. I've personally never tried them before. I've always been wary of them because I'm very, very heavy handed and I tend to squeeze stuff quite a bit. So I'm a little worried about using this because I worry that if I use it, then I'm going to squeeze like unintentionally and water is just gonna come pouring out of it. And also I think I pulled it off and it won't come back on now. I sure hope I didn't break this. Maybe I'm just not used to to it. I can't be breaking the supplies. I just opened the box, man. I'm an idiot. I was supposed to twist it the other way. I'm an, I'm an idiot. I'm dumb. I'm very dumb. So we've got three of these water brushes and it looks like these are the only brushes in the box. So it looks like I probably will have to use them. And I see a fine liner here. What's the fine liner? Ooh, let's see. Zig Cartoonist Mangaka Flexible Fine Tip. And I see what tip number it is anywhere. Water-based pigment. Okay, so the thing that I realized that I see about this is that it's a brush tip, which is nice, but I'm not gonna be able to use it until we're working on line art because it's water-based, which means that I could use it either as a black paint or I'm gonna have to wait until everything else is dry and then use it as line art over because if I make this wet, it will bleed. Since when did Smarties make lollipops? Since when was this a thing? Then we got some art pencils here, sketching pencils, 12 of them. Ooh, ooh, those are nice. Oh, actually, actually, that's really nice. Look at that 10B. Oh, these are out of order. Oh, I don't like that. Why are they out of order? Why are they out of order? I can't, I can't live with this. I can't let this stand. Why is it out of order? No, I'm fixing this right now. I am fixing this right now. It's fine. It's fine. I fixed it. We're all good now. Everything is fine. It is all okay. I have it from B all the way to 10B, then switching to HB, and then going from the highest H all the way down to the lowest. You have the lowest at both ends. There we go. It's fine now. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine now. And then last but not least, looks like we have a very, very, very chunky, oh, it's huge, really chunky watercolor sketchbook. Okay, it's a full 300 GSM, so that's really high quality, really thick watercolor paper. Oh, this is, this is beautiful. This is such nice watercolor paper. And there's 30 sheets of it. This is absolutely incredible. I am set, man. Do you know how many cows I can paint in this? Do you know how many watercolor cows I can paint? on square paper like this. Oh, this is this is wonderful. This is beautiful. Oh, this is amazing. I'm going to get in so much trouble with this. This is this is beautiful. This is this is beautiful. This is absolutely wonderful. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I could paint cows. I could use these to paint cows. Okay, what are the prompt words? Okay, I don't care anymore. What are the prompt words? Can I make it a cow? Circus candy baked circus cows. Candy cows. I'm going to make cows. I'm going to make circus cows and candy cows. I got cows on the brain. 1990s. Ooh, what if I made it a 1990s candy with candy on it. What if I did that? I, oh, my brain's going wild. My brain is wild.
wilding right now. I shall get to swatching and crumbing up with ideas for the cow right after I film the intro for the TikTok. All right, I do have to go to work soon, but I would like to get a little bit of swatching done before I start sketching some ideas. I would like to test these supplies, and also I would just like to mention this eraser looks like a stick of butter, and I absolutely love that. Let's test the fine liner first. I'm going to use this page as just my swatching page. Oh, that feels so nice. It feels so good. I love this pen. I love this pen already. It's the Zig Fine Liner pen. Oh, I like the varying line weights I can get with it. That's really nice. Oh, that is so nice. I'm very, very adamant that I do a cow. I am so very adamant that I make a cow. Another cow for my series of cows. Okay, let's start testing these. Let's see, just the red first. That is very pigmented. I really like that. I'm so scared. Oh, okay. It just releases drops of water. Ooh, it's a really light red. I really like that. It looks very pink. That is really pretty. It doesn't look as pink on camera, but it's very pink in real life. Okay, let's see orangey yellow. I'm gonna put that under the black. I really like that yellow, guys. That is a beautiful yellow. I like that it's a more golden yellow. I really like golden yellows. It's so nice. Now I'm curious to see what the green looks like. Okay, nice green, very nice. Okay, not a super natural green, which means I'll have to make more natural green because I tend to use more natural colors in my work. So if we're doing candy, I might not be doing natural colors all as much. Ooh, the blue is nice. This looks like a nice cobalt hue. I really like this color. Oh, that's pink. That is a very pink purple. What is up with this purple? Okay, I'm gonna have to make some purple, it seems, because this is a very pinky purple. That is very bright. I'm more into the bluish purples myself. I'm pretty sure that I can blend these to make them into whatever color I want. So if I want to make more bluish purples, I'm sure I can do that. I forgot to test the water solubility of the fine liner. I guess I can do that in a little bit. I'm also just gonna do a run through of the pencils real quick. Oh yes, very solid, very nice black. Okay, actually using the water brush pen isn't all that bad. Maybe maybe I was over hating on it. Maybe I was over hating on it. Maybe I was underestimating it a little bit. This isn't that bad. All right, those are the colors that come in the watercolor marker set. Those are really pretty colors. Just gonna test the water solubility of the fine liner real quick. Well, it seems a little bit water soluble. Not a lot though. It's not as water soluble as I thought it would be. So it's not that bad. It's not going to be horrific if I layer it on top of some not completely dried paint. And then all that would left would be the pencils. Basically all of my beginning drawing classes I've taken have been just pencil work and charcoal work. So I've become very familiar with different graphite pencils and how they work. BT are typically made of a softer lead. So when you're working with B, it'll typically be a lot easier to blend. B will also be a lot darker. And if you're working with H, it tends to be a a lot lighter, but H also stands for hard, so it is harder to erase. So when you work with H pencils, you really don't want to press too hard because they will be more difficult to erase. That's why I tend to go in the middle and use an HB because an HB is the perfect mix of I can get some dark in here, but I can also erase it if I want to. HB is typically what I use for sketching, and this one does have an HB in it. Typically, the darkest I get is an 8B. I've never been I've never been faced with a 10B before. The H doesn't sound as nice. Look, I'm very sound sensitive, all right? I hate I hate the way H's sound. They don't sound nice. Oh, that was a 6H. Whoops. I don't like the way they sound. They are not nice. They are scratchy. don't like. I do not like. See, the higher up you get on the H scale, the harder of lead they become, so they're just a lot harder to use. The 2H is okay. I'm okay with the 2H. All right, so as you can see, I spent some extra time doing some swatching, just figuring out colors. I think it's really, really interesting to see how these turn out after they all dried. I don't know what's up with these markers, but these markers have an insane amount of pinks and reds in them. Even the things that I blended that didn't necessarily have any pink in them ended up drawing with a more pink hue. You can especially see that here in the greens. I don't know how that's possible because I didn't even really blend any reds to make these. I didn't really blend any of the reds or purples to make these greens. I mostly just used black, green, and yellow to get these tones. So I don't know how this is happening, but somehow these greens all dry with a pink undertone. These greens all dry with a pink undertone for some reason. And even these blues turned out looking more pink, even though they didn't originally look like that. Which that makes me slightly regret the decision that I chose to go with. I did some research. I studied some 90s candies, candies that were popular in the 1990s, and I chose my favorite. I found one on that list that I was not expecting to see, that I absolutely love, and I know a lot of other people love. And I decided, I'm gonna use that for the cow. I'm gonna use that for making my cow painting. It's orange. The color of it is orange, but Maybe I should just let you know what it is that I'm going to be going for here. 
It's peach rings. I'm gonna be making a peach ring cow, a peach cow to be specific. I'm gonna be making a cow that is covered in peaches, peach slices, peach blossoms, the little peach flower blossoms, the leaves that grow on those little stems that have all the peaches on them, and of course, peach rings. I love peach rings. They're such a good candy. They're my sister's favorite candy. I know a lot of other people love these candies, and I had no idea they started in the 1990s. Apparently, the 1990s were the period for these candies. They were so popular in the 90s and I had no idea. I think it's gonna turn out really, really cool. Again, this is why I'm a little bit scared because these candies are very orange and our paints tend to dry more pink. So I'm a little scared to see how this will turn out, but I'm willing to give it a shot. I really want, I really, really want to try and make this work out. I really want to do this as best as I can because I'm really excited to be making a peach cow. Let's see, I think I'm gonna use the 2H for now. I'm gonna use the 2H with this, this eraser. Let's see, where can I find more pages in here? that I haven't used up yet. I think this is the last page I added on to. Oh, oh, I was already planning for it. That's right, I totally forgot. I had set aside this entire spread just for this smart art box. I had put the sticker there knowing I was gonna use this page and then I completely forgot about it. How convenient. As you guys know, I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna be working from right to left. So I'm gonna set my palette here, also from smart art. This little flower palette here is also from smart art. I'm gonna be using this palette. Do I have any paper towels? Actually, where's my uni ball signal? Cause I might be able to use it in this with the peach rings. So the peach rings are covered in like the little sugary sprinkle things are like covered in like little bits of sugar. So I could use the white pen to make it look like those little bits of sugar all over the peach rings. Let's see, maybe I should just start with just trying to draw a peach ring or two. The real question will be, can I draw a circle? And there's another little circle in the center. They're like a donut, only they taste like peach. Peach donut would be really, really good actually. I'm also seeing different colors of peach rings. Like I'm seeing multiple different types. I make a stack of them in all the different variations. Cause I'm seeing different versions of them. Like I tried to make it look like 3D. Like there's some of them that just aren't perfectly split down the center, which is really interesting. I like how I'm getting literal peach rings on my feed, like literal jewelry rings that look like peaches. Wait a minute, I'm not wearing my rings. Where are my rings? I don't think I'm gonna wear my big ring right now. I got my rings, we are good. Also, I should probably clean this out because there's a lot of pigment in here. I can get a different brush to clean that out. good amount of orange, like a decent orange. It can be slightly more on the pink side, but only ever so slightly. I want barely any pink in there. Okay, maybe that wasn't enough. I'm gonna try to do a layer of just the yellow first. Let's see, how do I feel about that yellow? Okay, that yellow's fine. You probably can't even see that on camera. Yeah, I want that to stay really, really light. I must do the orange. I if I gave it a little drop shadow, try to make it 3D, that might be cute. I should probably wait until it's dry before I do that, so maybe that was a good idea. I wonder who made peach rings. Like, what company invented peach Rings. I need to thank whatever mega company made peach rings. For once, mega companies have a good idea. Now I need to know who made peach rings. It was Haribo? It was Haribo who made these. Haribo made peach rings. No wonder I love their stuff so much. I think they make the gummy sharks and the gummy frogs. The gummy frogs are my favorite candy ever. I love gummy frogs. I think Haribo made those too. Who made the gummy frogs? They are made by Haribo. Look, the gummy frogs, they're made by Haribo. If I'm supporting a mega company, if I'm gonna support any mega company, it's gonna be Haribo, okay? They made the gummy frogs. They made the best candy in existence, okay? I worship Haribo now. They made the gummy frogs. Wait a minute, I've been painting with a regular paintbrush. I need to paint with the water pen. This just makes me think of that one song that's like, and it was all yellow. I don't know what that song is called. Orange. Try to make it darker on the inside around that little darker spot. I don't think I've ever tried to draw candy like this before. I've, I've definitely drawn candy in the past. I've mostly done like peppermint candies. I've mostly just drawn peppermint candies and I think like chocolate truffles and stuff like that. I think I've drawn candy canes. I've definitely drawn candy canes before, but I don't think I've really drawn that many candies. I've drawn jelly beans. I've drawn some jelly beans before, but I don't think I've ever drawn like any sort of gummy candies before. I'm liking the way that's looking so far. This is so pleasing. I love this. And that's coming from a person who normally can't consume mass amounts of sugar yet does anyway. My stomach is very, very sensitive to sugar, so I actually can't have that much candy, but do I still eat candy and make myself feel sick anyway? Yes, yes I do. This is gonna be such a beautiful cow when I end up making it into a cow. Tiniest 
smallest bit of blue. I'm gonna bring some of the orange over. That made it more of a greeny color. I need a lot for a shading color, just a little bit. That's really red. It's an okay shading color. Just to give a little bit of shadow. Just to say, oh, here's where this peach ring is compared to this peach ring. Oh, this is looking so nice and pastel. It looks so pretty. Maybe I can have that little shadow there now. There we go, I have a little drop shadow for those now. It's so cute. I'm gonna wait for that to dry, so I'm gonna do just a tiny bit of line art. I have to be so careful, because this is a brush one. I wanna accidentally make it too big. You know what, I'm gonna add a little bit of a cartoony effect here. I love the line art stage, though. The line art stage is my favorite part of any piece. I just love doing line art. That's why I like Inktober so much, because basically all of Inktober is nothing but line art. Don't ask me why I like it so much. It's just so detail-oriented, and I can also be like so freehanded with it. Like, it's detailed and time consuming and you have to put thought into it but you also don't like it's a, it's a very freeing part of the process that I just really really like. I know it's not common for a lot of people to say that they like the line art stage like I know a lot of people don't say that's their favorite a lot of people say that they absolutely hate that stage because they feel like they're just going over what they already did. I just love line art I just I just love line art so much. Some part of me just decided all right we're doing the outsides too. Don't mind me just adding these little boxes here just I don't know why I'm doing them I just am. Nice, nice. I'm gonna add the little white sugary specks. Honestly, I like it even more now. I like it even more with the little white spots. Little highlights. It looks so good. Look at them, they're so pretty. I know what I wanna do next. I wanna make a big one. I'm gonna make a big peach ring. Here's some books. There we go, just a little bit of water. Just make it a little bit lighter. Could always start looking up what peaches and stuff look like. Let me save some photos of the peach rings real quick. Oh yeah, they have the pit in the middle. I forgot peaches had that. I need to start making some peach color. Just the more yellowy one that's redder, and then a really red one. Peaches reach a point where they turn red, apparently, so I can definitely use this color in there. I definitely see this color in all my reference photos of peaches. That's one of those really dark undertones, so I could use that. Would it be cheating if I pulled in another smart art supply to help me with this? Because I feel like I'm not going to get the red that I need. Is it okay if I pull in my Ecoline watercolor inks? It's a watercolor product, so I'm assuming I can. Ooh, I think we found our red. That's it, that's the red. What if I made this look like, what if I made all of them look like this? I'm gonna make all of these look like they're li those little paint swatches you can get at the paint store. And then I'm gonna make it look like there's a board behind them because that would just be cute. I'm gonna make them look like they're actually pinned to an actual board. Besides, I haven't made a really pretty looking sketchbook spread in a while. All the rest, all my most recent pages in my sketchbook have just been nothing but like black and white graphite sketches. I haven't done anything super fancy with them recently. I got a little drop shadow behind it. Why is this gradually getting pinker? I'm greatly confused. Oh, that, that's a thing. That happened. It needs to look yellow. It looks a little pink. Not gonna lie, it looks a little pink up here. I just fully embrace the orange. Shading. Beach. Palette to make it its own little tag as well. I knew that watercolor ink works well for everything. I wonder if I can just start doing the line art over it, even though it's definitely not dry yet. I'm just gonna do it. Ooh, that looks so good. And now I must add white. A little white glaze there. I'm going to attempt a peach pit when you cut the peach in half and you have a little pit in the center. I think I want to start with that. Shh. I want to rotate it sideways so I don't like it this way. Why am I using a needed eraser? I shouldn't be using this. It didn't come in the box. Another one right here. So it's so you can see it more 3D. It is like right here. It's got this like wiry, it's like got a very wiry coarse texture. It kind of looks like wood just a little bit. Tree bark wood. I like this. I like this little sketch I have going on here. Wait, do I want to add leaves? I should add leaves. They're like very, very long. They have really long leaves. Wait, if I can make this look good, that would actually be a really pretty sticker. Ooh, I'm thinking about it now. Let's start getting some stuff down here. Ooh, yeah, yellow. This is really destroying my paper. It's so weird. I've never seen my Elo sketchbook paper react this badly to water before. Orange, more orange. Damn, this really just does not want to work. Maybe you can make another little color palette sheet here just for like greens. Maybe I should figure out some greens while I wait. Still not quite the green I'm looking for. I could use that as a base. I like that green. I can just keep going over it again with darker green. Oh, that's that's certainly not normal. That's that's never happened before. I have never had paint go through to the next page like this before. I have never seen that happen before. Wait, while I'm waiting for this to fully dry, let me just where was my last where was my last 
watercolor page. You know how I mentioned that all I've done for the past while has been nothing but graphite sketch pages? Yeah, I wasn't lying. The last one I made a fancy page for was the one the one smart art video where I made the panda art. Also just nothing but graphite. This one was nothing but graphite until I added the Posca. Oh, this is so old. This just has an alcohol marker background. See, even this one barely bled through. It barely bled through it all, and that's alcohol marker. I, I need to finish this page. There's not enough on this page. Alcohol marker, barely bled through. Small alcohol marker, alcohol marker. Where's the watercolor pages? Ayo, Ayo, where are they at? Oh, I have so much stuff I need to work on from this page. These ones are Posca, stickers. Oh, these are watercolor. That, this is the one I was thinking of. See, there's nothing at all bleeding through on these ones. These ones are all with watercolor, and nothing at all bled through. That is so strange. That is so weird. That is so, so weird. I almost dipped this in the water. That would have been awful. Guys, I don't think this one's gonna dry for a while. I have a lot of issues with this one. Do you see how it's bleeding? I'm having some issues here, man. I might have to wait for this one to finish. I might have to start sketching some cows or something because I don't think this is gonna dry soon. is I don't really think I have time to just keep adding on more and more layers to this because I think it's just going to keep bleeding through more and more. I don't really want that to happen. I think there's only so many layers that this paper can take with whatever is causing this to act this way. Again, none of my others have acted this way before. None of my other watercolors have acted this way in the past. So this is just really, really strange to me. I don't want to ruin any more of my sketchbook by accidentally putting too many layers onto one page. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to do the line art over these peaches and then I'll move on to start working on cow sketches. just looked up what peach blossoms look like. They're beautiful. These are so pretty. I must draw them. Okay, so they're a little bit pinker in tone. They have five petals. They're just so pretty. Let us paint these little guys. Guys, I found the best cow picture I want to reference. Look at this cow. Look at the cow. I'm gonna be quiet because I know it's quiet hours right now. That's the cow I'm gonna reference for this painting. I love it so much. I'm gonna do some sketches of the cow. I'm gonna make the little nose. See, we're gonna place the eyes. Shape that in. My eyes will be tilted. This cow will just have really big, really beautiful eyelashes. Because, yeah, I give my cows eyelashes because I can. This will be what the sixth cow in the series, I think. It's got such long fur. This ear would be up higher. I think I have this ear a little wonky. I think I should try to give it some undertones. Peach tone colored spots. All the fur under the ears be that peachy tone. Orange nose. And that like fade up from orange. Mm -hmm. oh, let's be a happy cow. There we go, there's eyelashes. There's just gonna be some eyelashes down here as well. Or little hairs. Or he. Or they. I don't know what this cow is. You can choose. I never really assign my cows to anything specific. Get the eyelashes on this side. I have, I'll make it have a nicer bottom than that. I'm not a huge fan of that bottom. I won't put a date on this one since it's just a sketch. Or maybe I will. I love it. I think it looks adorable. I'm so excited. It looks so cute. I know you can't really see it on camera, but adding the purple, it did something. I think I just I just want to sit and work on the big sketch.
right, it is Sunday morning. As you can see, I've finished the spread. This is finally dried and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I really, really like it. I know I was worried. I was really worried the entire time I was making it. But I honestly think it turned out looking really, really good. I really like it. I'm definitely gonna turn it into something, sticker or a print or something. And then you saw me working on finishing the bigger sketch of the cow. And now I think I'm just gonna start sketching for the final illustration slash painting because I'm really, really excited about this. I'm just gonna have a little documentary playing while I'm working on sketching this. So if you hear any noises in the background, that's probably the documentary. The nose somewhere down here. Did my tongue come to about here? Because since it's tilted, that's why I figure it's gonna have to be a bit more off center just so I can make it look centered. So I wanna figure out the eye. Eyelashes. This cow has really big eyelids and I think it's really, really pretty. I think this was the right size to go because there's gonna be all this space up here for me to fill in with all of the stuff. And it has this little fur slash hair coming out here. I'm gonna make the horns. It might be around that big, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll make it a little bigger. I think this ear is still a little bit too small. I keep dropping the pencil. Now I just gotta cover it with stuff. So if it's like an earring, because why not? Figure out where I wanna put the peaches. Here's one. A little vine. See, so do I wanna add like a slice of peach on here somewhere? I feel like I should. Yeah, don't have anything over here yet. I think, again, I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wing it. I'm not gonna think about it. Very, very small. That defies gravity in a way I don't like. I can't see, I can see it all smudging. There's another peach ring. So honestly, the longest part is getting all these little details up on the crown of the head. I might try to balance it out by adding some stuff down here. Just a tiny bit of stuff, not a lot. Because it does feel pretty heavy up here and I would like a little bit of stuff down here. Right, there we go. I have all the water down. Start blending colors while I'm waiting. Actually, I might still have a little bit left here. That really watered down the nose. I can keep it pastel. I actually really like the look of the orange fading into the white. I don't want that there. I think this is a peach down here. This is a peach ring. See, I don't want to start adding any more until this dries. I just want to be really, really careful with it. I wouldn't say there's any specific technique or secret that I have to it, especially since each cow is different and I treat each cow a little bit differently depending on what they are. Like not one cow is completely the same as the other. Some of them used completely different techniques. Like the mushroom cow that I just did recently, that one was a completely different painting process because I had to do several different undercoats before I could get to that red because I had to leave the little gray areas gray. In order to make sure that that stayed as light as I needed it to, I had to paint the entire thing with an undercoat of that gray color. And then I slowly had to build up and add the red. I'll let that sit for a second. It's a little red right now. Didn't make a little orange section here. I gotta fix that. Also might make the tag perfect just because I think that would look nice. Where is my green? I don't know where my green went. Let me get my green. Just making nice little leaves. All right, there's the last little leaf. At least down here on the bottom. Ooh, the purple looks nice. I really like the purple. I think it just provides a really, really nice contrast with all the orange and yellow. Honestly, not really sure. Peach blossoms can be both pink and a white peachy color. Most of the photos I saw were pink. It, I feel like it's more accurate for peach blossoms to have like more of a peachy, lighter, like almost white color. This looks nicer to me. I might go in with the marker directly. Semen? Is that what it's called? The little sections here in the center of a flower? Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember flower anatomy all that well. Whatever the little center part is of flowers. Okay, I've let it dry for a little bit. And just make tiny little strokes. Fill in the mouth and add the liner. Didn't want to make it too dark or too narrow where the head officially is. Probably do the other eye, shouldn't I? Give me a second eye. A little fur mark. I'm gonna start doing one of the peach rings. And there's the start of the tag. I hope this still looks like a peach. Once I add the white pen, it's gonna look so good. I did recently learn that these paints slash markers and brand in general are not super light fast, so I am a little bit worried about that because these just aren't the most light fast brand, but I really, really like the colors that it gives me. So for now, Wow, I'm really, really happy with it. Down here, I don't know what this is. I just have a little thing of orange here. I don't think that's another peach ring. Can we peel off the tape? I think I'm, no, wait, I'm not done. I'm not done. I still have the little white marks. I still have the white marks to do. I'm not done yet. My bad. Did I get all the peach rings? 
I think I did. I think I got all of them. I, I think I might be done. I just need to sign it. There we go. Overall, I think this was a really good box. I think the project turned out to be a success. I think the supplies all worked really, really well. These are still really nice. I really like that they're brush tip. They had really nice colors. I'm still a little bit worried about the light fastness of it. It does dry pretty pale, and I do like that. That worked really well for the cows. I think it turned out looking really, really good. This was really, really fun. A peach cow was one I've been wanting to do for a little while. Peach cow has been requested a couple times, so it was fun to get to combine the cow series with something that Smart Art sent me along with their prompts, so that was really, really fun. I really enjoyed this one, and I think this one is definitely one of the best outcomes out of my boxes that I've made yet. Let me just make this end frame look pretty for you all. All right, that was everything that came in the April Smart Art box. This has been a wonderful box to work with. I love the sketchbook spread I came up with. I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. I really, really like the painting that I did of these peaches here. Definitely gonna turn that into something. Of course, we made our adorable little peach ring cow here. Our 90s peach ring, peach blossom. Overall, just general peach cow. It turned out really cute. I think the purple brings out a really, really nice accent and brings out a little pop. This has been such a fun one. I absolutely love this one. And I got it done really quickly too. I didn't take too long on this one. Like anything that you saw me make in this video, whether it's these peaches or if it's this or if it's the cow itself, you can probably find them up on my Redbubble. I've probably posted them by now. So if you're interested in any of these, you can get them as prints or stickers or literally anything else you may want that Red level can offer. Link to that is always in the description of my videos so you can find my shop there. Thank you again Smarter, of course. Their links are always in the description for these videos as well. This one was really really fun. I had such a fun time making this one, especially since this is the last box of the school year, so this is just a really fun one to end off with. I also have a vlog coming up soon. I recorded all the way from spring break up until the art market I was at. So that's gonna be really fun. Whatever the next video may be, I will see you all there. Bye! Oh,